Hello, Balmy Badger Army, and welcome to another episode of Badger Clan. Today, we're going to be talking about retro gaming and plants vs. zombies. Yep. Indeed. So, my first experience with gaming years and years and years ago was on the Game Boy, and I played it all for many years in the early 90s. And, um,. I loved it. My first game was Tetris, and then I played Mario Land, and then I played Wario Land, and Mario Land 2. Those were my favourites, along with Pit Fighter, that was awesome. And I really enjoyed uh, Gargoyle's Quest, that's a really cool game to play. And of course, DuckTales, woo! Indeed. In fact, I think I enjoyed the game more than I enjoyed the actual cartoon, because... It was just so exciting and there was lots of secrets in it. It was one of the first games I remember that had lots of weird little secrets in it that you could go around and find. And it was like the whole game was like a veritable treasure map wandering around trying to find all these different things. And it was really exciting. And then, of course, I managed to, uh, you know, convince my parents to let me play it at night time. But then, obviously, on the way home, you had to wait for a street light to go past so you could play. And then, eventually, they released the Game Boy Light, the, you know, the magnifier, and all these different things that would add on to the Game Boy to make it look like a Decepticon about this big. <laughs> but you'd be able to play it while you were out, if you had strong enough arm strength. <laughs> Because they even had like joysticks with it and everything. It was really good fun. So I really enjoyed that. Obviously, I went on to the Game Boy. Actually, did I have... They did a smaller Game Boy, which had a better screen. And I skipped that. And I had the one with... It was like a clear... Do you remember we saw it in the retro shop the other day? Uh, a and Game Boy Killer. Yeah, Basically, clear. It can be in different colours and you can kind of see the mechanism in it. That's it, yeah. And, and that was orange, wasn't it? Whereas I had the totally clear one. You could just see uh, clear plastic and that was one of my favourites. there was one that clear, completely clear at the shop. Was there? But that was the sure. smaller one, wasn't it? I had the yeah. bulkier one Ooh, that was really yeah. cool, yeah. And, um, and then I went on from that. There was been quite a few Game Boy... Uh, ones. I had a Game Boy. I had a Game and Watch. That was really cool. My favourite Game and Watch game was uh, Zelda because it wasn't too like it was like an action one where you could play as Link and fight all these different skeletons and find all the different keys and stuff. That was hey, really cool. Dad, mm -hmm. what would you say is your game favourite Game Boy? I would say the liquid, the clear one. Because the mechanisms had become a bit better. Yep. With the original one, it was fantastic, but flawed. Like, you could get these. If you played it too much, lines would come out. And you wouldn't be able to see the whole screen. Like, the LCD uh, display would crack. I know. But I had to put up with that for quite a while. Because, obviously, you, you know, it was hard to fix. And it was one of these things where it would be better off to buy a new one. But then you'd have the lines for it if you didn't. And I remember having the lines for it for a whole year. And I remember one time um, I had to use my pocket money every week. I had to save up every two weeks for batteries. So if I played it too much, I had to wait a week and save up for batteries. That was painful. Yeah, that probably was. That was proper old school problems, that was. Yeah, so I had to save up my pocket money for batteries for the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and then uh, it was really good. Like I said, Pit Fighter was really cool. I really enjoyed that game. There was loads of cool stuff. Loads of cool games. The Legend of Zelda on there was great. And, yeah, and like, I really enjoyed having the Game Boy. Uh, the Game Boy Advance wasn't quite as fun. It didn't have that magic for me. So the old school Game Boy is definitely there. At the minute, I'm definitely enjoying playing Game Boy uh, Advance games and Game Boy Color games and stuff. It's hey. different when you're playing it a bit better and you're older. Dad, but the magic of the old games is good. Yes. Would do you rather playing on old-fashioned games like 
such as the the first Game Boy and right. Game Boy Color. Yeah. Huh? Game Boy Clear games or now games. Oh, it really does depend on my mood, but I would say at the minute I'm definitely retro focused. Yes. Yes. So which one? Um, old school Game Boy. Yeah. yeah. Because even when I've been streaming, I've been doing Splatterhouse, which is a really cool gore game. Uh, I've been playing Pac-Man, and I've been doing Root Film, which is quite retro as well. It reminds me of text adventure games. You've never played a text adventure game, have you? No. No, I think you would like it. If you like reading, a text adventure game is really cool, because it literally sparks your imagination. It tells you on the screen, you're in a dark cave. What oh. do you do? Yeah, have I, you I, played I, one of those? Yeah, I've played one of those on Cool Math Games. Ah, yeah. On the website. On the website, yeah. Well, I have to find you some other ones because they're really cool. Old school text adventure games are fun. Um, you know, it, and it literally makes you think of the graphics. It makes you imagine what's happening. You know, you have no graphical interface. It literally just says you're in a dark cave. There's a skeleton next to you. What do you do? You know, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, but for some. But, yeah, in some games, it's just like, how did the character get in those situations? Well, you find that out later on, you know. Yeah, like, in in old-fashioned games, and now games, and even films. That's it. That's it. The plot's quite interesting, isn't it? Yeah, but sometimes the characters are just not being very smart. No, they're not. No, they're not. And that's why they've ended up in the situation they're in anyway, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that's part of it, really. Yeah, that's part of the unfortunate fact is that a lot of video game protagonists um, are not very smart. And that's why they've ended up in these terrible situations. Yep. <laughs> yes. But yeah. And if you think, like, Mario's insane, why would you go off? And, and, and do all that stuff and go and rescue the princess. That's insane, right? I mean, I mean, I think that it's kind of... Well, Mario might be getting paid for it. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what is making Mario do it. Yeah, oh yeah, the dollar dollar. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think somehow he does love princess. Yeah, he does. Yes, so that would push you forward. But yeah, the motivation for a lot of these characters is quite like, why would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one minute Mario's on a massive adventure to rescue a princess, the next minute he's in a weird tube popping bubbles in an alleyway, and then the next minute he's playing tennis and golf. That is true. He, <laughs> he does do that. He does do that, yeah. And literally just driving around in a car in circles for the next 40 hours. I know. <laughs> Uh, there's been a lot of rumours about what the actual storyline of Mario Kart is. They reckon, because obviously Bowser's in it and everything, there's a big bad that's even worse than Bowser, and everyone's literally been forced to appear in this annual TV show, Kart Race. Wait, doesn't that technically mean that the, you know, the person who brings you out of the holes and, you know... Yeah, there's a big mystery to it. thing... Is actually the one who's is actually recording the thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like, is it a charity event where even Bowser joins in to help the kingdom? Then they, you know, be interested to see what the storyline is between Mario Kart. You know. Yeah, and it, even some of the golf oh. games. That's it. Like, why would Bowser be competing in tennis? <laughs> Someone who can breathe fire and just steal the prize. Yeah, but that's not very honourable. Maybe he enjoys a nice game of tennis. Who knows? <laughs> then why isn't he playing tennis all the time? Yeah. And he might be a really good tennis player, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, but who has time to kidnap a princess, play... Wait, wait, is that how he... He... Isn't very safe because he's literally playing tennis half the time. He's playing tennis and golf. He's 
operating a world takeover mission. Yep. It has singing lessons, apparently. That's true, that, that does happen in the movie. <laughs> it does. And he's doing all these different things. Maybe Bowser should stick to one thing. Maybe he should just stick to trying to take over the world yep. and not stick to tennis lessons and do all these different things. Wait, isn't there also a swimming thing? I'm not 100% sure. I think there might be. Yeah, there and there's also uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. I'm yep. pretty sure you played Bowser there. When does Bowser get time to like, appear in the Olympic Games? These are questions. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And when... in Mario Party, he's just like... So who's invented this massive board game for them all to play? These are questions. And also, you literally... What? Why? I just don't even know. Yes. I know... Maybe Mario can travel to different dimensions. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but all I know is that... <laughs> all I know is that, um, yeah, they've appeared in <coughs> massive board games. There must be some sort of weird evil afoot. Who knows? But yes, we're going to move on to our next subject, which is um, Plants vs. Zombies and your experiences with retro games as well. I'm currently playing Plants vs. Zombies on the DS. Mm -hmm. That's which it. It's actually really fun. That's it. I actually like pixelated games more than current games, like even if the graphics are best. Like... Yeah, but it's not all about graphics though, is it? Graphics yeah. don't equal personality in games, do they? Mm -hmm. like, and sometimes it does. And also, I, I, with the pixelated games, I get your old-fashioned feel. That's it, yeah. You get to experience what we experienced back in the day. Yeah. And uh, that is more a bit more wholesome, I think. But yeah, no, not everything is all about posh graphics and things like that. Yeah. I prefer games with a lot more personality and a lot more sort of inspiration and fun to them where they've been worked on. The gameplay is far more important than it looking pretty. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what were your first experiences using a DS? Did you like it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I first played on a DS at school because I have DSs at school. I yeah. didn't know that until recently. recently. Actually, since, well, February. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to try and get you a copy of brain training, I think. It's fun. I quite like brain training. I prefer maths training, honestly. Maths training. I don't like brain training. No, okay. It... And why is that? Well, I don't. Okay. Brain <laughs> training, I, I just don't like it. Okay. So you prefer the maths training one? Interesting. Yeah. Maths training isn't obviously that fun, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the best game on the DS at school. Okay. But... The best game you've played so far is Plants vs. Zombies. You really love that. And you love all the sort of mechanisms. Do you like how you have to use the stylus and the buttons as well and the dual screen? Do you like that? Mm -hmm. See, I didn't have a dual screen for ages. The, the dual screen for in the Plants vs. Zombies is just really just cool and that's it. And okay. also, all it does is show the bar and have zombies walking around. That's cool. You know, obviously the 3DS has a lovely dual screen and stuff. I really like that. See, I would say I like the Switch, but I also like the 3DS as well. Yeah. There's tons of games on the 3DS I want to still play. So there you go. There's lots of cool stuff. So please let us know your favourite retro games in the comments. If you're watching this back, don't forget to say hi. And if you've enjoyed today, like. Yep. And subscribe! Share and subscribe, indeed! That felt so weird because I never asked to subscribe and like. Wibbles. But yes, thank you very much everyone for watching. And I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And please tell us your retro comments, your retro memories in the comments. And it's been lovely having a little chat with you guys. We will see you next time. Bye! 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 Indeed. Bye.